job one on the starter. Ever and always, disconnect the battery. This car is an 8mm. Can you get this throttle body, or throttle intake assembly off the throttle body? And out of the way so we can do our starter. First of all, there's a clamp, a hose clamp over here. Then there are two 10 millimeter bolts holding this cover. Knee along. Now, lastly, inside here, there's a clamp that holds this onto the throttle body. And look, they've conveniently put a little cutout in here so you can reach the screw with a straight blade screwdriver. Okay, let's see if we can get this assembly off here now. That's a little, there's a connector on this. Let's just set it over here to get it out of the way. I just want to point something out when you pull out this intake assembly here. There's a hose. Fits right there. Okay, so here's the starter. Solenoid up here. This is a good sized starter for a small engine. Okay, this is kind of the rare starter that actually is removed from the top, not from underneath the engine. Um, where it's mounted on top. So we're going to uh, get this fan out of the way, which isn't hard to do. Um, we'll just first of all disconnect this connector down here. Unplug it. Plug the wire to it. And now there's just one 10 millimeter bolt up here to take out. lifts out something you get caught a couple places of course there it is now the other item that could be a problem with the zone in here the oil filter I'm not sure if we can clear this as we pull the starter back and then move it out Okay, the problem with this starter, getting it out, is the proximity, not so much of the oil filter, but right behind the back of the starter. If you can make it out here, get up here. That's the oil pressure switch and wiring to it. And that really, you have to be very careful when you pull the starter back in this direction, that way, that you don't hit that. That's why you're way better off just removing the filter and unplugging that um, oil pressure sensor in order not to damage it as you pull the starter out. Okay, so it's out with the filter. I have a catch pan here to catch this. So right here we've got the uh, perfectly accessible 15 millimeter upper bolt, which I have half inch socket on, it's already busted loose. So here's the bottom bolt, you can see now below the starter, right in the middle of the frame. And what I'm going to use on this one is a 3 8 inch ratchet uh, with a swivel and then of course to the 15 millimeter and I'll get that on the bolt. Okay, so the swivel gives us the ability to get away from the side of the starter and now we can um, I'm blocking my light off. Okay, I should pull up. Get this thing broken loose. Maybe. There it goes. Okay, so both bolts are broken loose. You can see our starter. Starter is now loose. So reaching underneath here now, I'm able to turn out this lower bolt or starter mounting bolt. So now it's just held in by the upper. 
So, holding the starter with one hand, kind of holding it up now, and turn this other one out. And okay. Of course, the starter's still still wired up. Now we can't really do until we get it out of there, out of position. For the upper bolt, I should mention, is longer. It's longer the two. It's going to do more material. So you've got the starter unbolted. And what you want to do now is just be aware of the position of that switch. As you pull it back, okay, what I'm going to do now is unplug it, lift up on it, push it out. Now we don't have to worry about the wiring anymore. I rotated the solenoid a little bit toward me. That seems to be the secret here. Okay, so I've got one hand on these here. So far back I can move this. Got it pretty much out of the housing. And now I'm going to try to pull it forward. I've managed to get the starter. There's the nose down there. So now I think we can get it in a position where we can unwire it. Yeah. There's the wiring there. Right here. So we'll unwire it and pull it the rest of the way down. So I did manage to get this out. It's a tight fit. Looks like they're using the B plus for a number of other purposes here too. There's several other wires that are hooked onto that, so bear that in mind. Okay, that's a wire that simply connects to the starter there, to the, uh, in the cellar, starter and solenoid through the switch. There's the solenoid control wire. So this upper bolt, the B plus is a 13 millimeter. little bolt. You'll have to remember on this starter there's also a lock washer underneath there. The other wire that has to come off is solenoid control wire. This is 8 millimeter. It turned off very easy. Just a nut. Okay, now I'll bring it out through the front. I should point out, this isn't an original starter. I actually replaced this out two or three years ago. Uh, it's an aftermarket. It turns out to be Napa. Uh, one thing about this solenoid, if you do have a bad solenoid, this one is changeable and available out there. You know, for under $30, if you have a starter that won't start, does nothing, no click, um, that's an option to save money. Okay, so now we're just going to do the reverse our starter. Bring it down here. There's some uh, air conditioning hoses underneath here. Be careful around those. And get the starter back in a position to wire it up. Okay, here's a look at the wiring. Make sure you wire it back up like this. There's the solenoid control wire, and of course the three wires coming into the uh, B+. Plus. The important factors here. Important wires, got a fusible link, got another wire, I'm not sure what it's for, and of course then there's the, uh, the B+, plus wire going back to the battery. So with the starter down here and out of the way, still wired up, hanging from the uh, another big B+, plus wire, it's not going anywhere, it's kind of resting on some wire down here on some hoses down here. We now can have a good look at the pressure switch. So there's the switch. It's got our light on. If you disconnected your pressure switch, oil pressure switch, this uh, would be a good time to plug it back in. Although I did mine after the starter was in place. Uh, it's just difficult to show that on video. I'm going to hoist the starter up from underneath. 
with an eye toward being careful with the wiring. Okay, we were careful to avoid damaging any wiring. So now we've got it pretty much in place. Finger tight. Okay, so reaching up here, get this little in position. There it is. Kind of hold the starter up a little bit so you can get more in. I'll turn as far as I can by hand. It's not going to be very far. Plus, this puts a really poor ergonomic position here. It's getting kind of the lower one. What I'll do here is I'll slip in the, the same set I used to put it in, take it out, which was, uh, I used that universal joint in there. Greatly help you because of the uh, body of the starter kind of being in the way here. You don't really have it super torqued yet. I'm going to get the top one in there first, snugged up. So the top and turning in. So let's finish tightening up this upper bolt. Let's get it good and tight. Okay, so we're in on our lower one now. One with a U. Okay, so wired and mounted now. So what's left now is just some of the um, putting some of the parts back in that we took out of the way here. Okay, starters back in, our switch is back in. Screw the oil filter back on. Always just hand tight. See down here, the fan mounts in these little rectangular uh, cutouts. There's one here you can see a little bit better. So the fan simply gets placed back down in there. Okay, let's plug the fan in. And put it back in the wire harness. There we are. We're snap back together. Now for this bolt. I think we'll never seize on there. Anti seize on there. I'm still getting kind of rusty looking. Also helps them go in a lot easier when you put it back together. That was 10 millimeter. We'll tighten that up. Okay, so we'll put the intake assembly back in place. Remember, hook this up, which came out. Alright, just got the two ends to put on. Tighten up the hose clamps and the two 10 millimeters here. 
We've got this in place. Go in here and tighten up the hose clean. With a flat blade screwdriver. And there's another hose clamp over here. Should have centered on there. Then the two 10 millimeter screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. We've added some nevers to these two. Put the battery back up. This was eight millimeter. Okay, that's that. And we'll just test it, call it a day. Okay, let's see if we've got it right. Let's go test this. Yeah, it looks like we're back in business. Thanks for watching this video.